So the latest chapter of Black Clover is finally out. And this chapter focuses on Ryu and the backstory and how he became the Shogun, how he got the all-seeing eye, and what happened to him when he lost all of his Yuryoku. Because this chapter explains all of the questions that we have for Ryu because of the sacrifice that he was able to do to go ahead and save the country. Because remember, one of the clues or one of the questions that we had was that how Ryu became the Shogun. The other question was that how he was able to save the lands of the Rising Sun and reunite everyone. And also, how did he lose all of his magical powers? And it seems as if that he lost all of his magical powers thanks to a sacrifice. Because at the time when he says that he doesn't have any magical powers, it was just like, okay, so how you're able to see through the future. So you have to be capping. But apparently it was a sacrifice of him sacrificing his own magical powers to gain an ability. And it's kind of like give and take. So with this great ability to see through the future, it was going to take all of your magical powers. And I guess with the lands of the rising suns, taking all of your magical powers is pretty much is that you're kind of like a weakling at this moment because throughout this backstory we figured out that Ryu and one of the Ryuzens were actually the top people from their islands and they used to clash against each other and you can tell Ryu's magic based on this chapter was probably a fire type magic while we see that the other Ryuzen Yoshiga, whose magic type was actually iron, which was later revealed in the chapter after he was fighting against Heath, in which he was able to defeat him. And so those two were buddy buddies. They two were neck and neck. Those two, Yoroku, was just evenly matched. They were just rivals with each other. But until the day of the plague that actually came to their land, making everyone sick and dying, and it came to a point where if they don't get any medicine or treatment, the whole two islands of where they stay at is what actually was going to be annihilated. So both of them heard about this legend about this magical herb that will be able to heal the people. So they went to go to see this famous folklore of how to get this magical herb. But the only way that you can get those magical herb to go ahead and help the people is that it's like this giant like location of like this secret location where you probably have to sacrifice your Ryoku to get Tengetsu. And there you can see how the difference between Yoshuga and Ryu, because the whole story of Ryu and Yoshuga's story is that they're friends and rivals, and they both wanted to become the Shogun of the Lands of the Rising Suns. So here you see that Yoshuga, he didn't want to actually sacrifice his Ryoku. He was just like, if I sacrifice my Ryoku, I won't be strong enough to go ahead and like defend the people and all of this stuff. So he was willing to let the people die. Unlike Ryu, where he was just like, you know what? It must be. If I have to sacrifice my Ryoku to get the all-seeing eye so I can get to find this herb and actually heal my people, then I'll go ahead and do that. And this is what Ryu actually did, which actually gained a lot of followers because a lot of people saw that Ryu was saving people's lives and that he did the extreme sacrifice of his own selfish needs to go on ahead and help others. And at that time, Yoshiga was just like, wait a minute, why would Ryu do this? Aren't you dumb? Like, bro, you're not going to be strong enough. And then at this point, you can see that Yoshiga, he was worrying about losing his rival and how that he's going to measure up and test out his limit because he was seeing that Ryu was sacrificing his Ryoku and he was like, wait a minute, if you sacrifice Ryoku, you won't be the Shogun. And later in times when he kept seeing people kept following Ryu and how he just brought the people together, how he was helping people, how he was just there instead of just, you know, being stronger, he saw that people wanted Ryu to be the Shogun and then he accepted the fact that Ryu is the Shogun and that he will be the seven reusing to be there to protect the lands of the rising sun.
Plus, this kind of seems as if this is foreshadowing for like the future because, you know, Asta and you know, they're both in the same boat, how they're both are friends and rivalries and how they're kind of like, you know, the most powerful upcoming mages or magical knights that you will see. So it's just kind of very funny how like, you know, both of these guys, Ryu and your sugar were rivals and then how they're both just trying to be the Shogun. And then you see Yuno know, and Asta, how they're trying to get stronger and become the Wizard King. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So I don't know if this is like foreshadow or this is just something like, you know, that's their own story. And you know, and, and Asta is gonna have like their own story on who's going to be the Wizard King. But other than that, yeah. So we focus on your sugar in the fight with Heath and he was able enough to defeat, you know, Heath easily when he did his iron warrior technique and he was able to finish him off. And at this point, we focus on the battle with Asta as he's fighting against the five headed dragons and he's using his Zen 10 technique. And especially with the Zen 10 power with the anti magic is still it's not enough to go ahead and defeat the five headed dragons because the five headed dragons is able enough to regenerate as quickly as possible. And as of this point, it seems as Asta is having a difficult time defeating the five headed dragons. But the rest of the reusins, they all get up and they're all ready to go ahead and start battling because Ryu, he says, people, there ain't no way that we'll be defeated here. So let's all take the five headed dragons down. This is your fight, your effort and everything. And as of this moment, hearing the courage of their Shogun, giving them the encouraging words and strength, the rest of the Ryuzen are like, yes, sir. And as of this moment, they're all ready to prepare to go on ahead and battle against the five headed dragons. So the next chapter, we're going to see Asta and the seven Ryuzens battle against the five headed dragons. And that's just how the chapter ends. And this chapter was really great because we finally are able to get the backstory of all seeing eye. But we can kind of speculate how when he did the sacrifice of his Ryoku, who's actually behind the wall of the whole Tengetsu ability, because remember, they operate different and how they say certain words and techniques are a lot different than how they do it in the Clover Kingdom. So you can kind of suspect a theory that when Ryu sacrificed his Ryoku, he sacrificed his Ryoku to the Time Magic Devil, and the Time Magic Devil gave him an ability to actually see through the future and everything else, and also to see certain objects that is naked to the human eye. So you can probably just see those theories probably come up, and this probably is a theory as well as well, because we already saw how Yami's father tried to force feed Ichika to get this demonic power to start a war. So anything is possible in the lands of the Rising Suns or in Black Clover. And remember, everything in different terms and lingos are different from the lands of the Rising Suns. So all of this is happening in this latest chapter of Black Clover. But let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this. What's your guys' thought process and everything? Do you guys, you know, believe this crazy theory? Or do you guys see this crazy theory coming to fruition? Or do you guys, like, just, just go by the backstory and the source material that, you know, he sacrificed, got Tengetsu, and all of this happened? But let me know down in the comment section and let me know how you guys think about this chapter and everything else. And this is the Monoto Man. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Remember, always be decent and be safe out here. Peace.